Nelson. Good gravy. A radio host. Found myself two million short of a millionaire. Barely understandable. Gee, Monetti. We can rebuild him. Guy's bright as a napkin. We have the technology. You gotta work with design, vision, and focus. Better than he was before. It's not lonely in my head. Funnier. I'm staring at a bowl of spaghetti trying to figure out which two ends come together. More informative. Characters defined by what you do once you screw up, not if you make mistakes along the way. And just as sarcastic. You sausage. Oh, come on! Give us 60 minutes and we'll give you Nelson Radio every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. on KTLK AM 1150. With 29 years in the mortgage business and an array of top-level guests visiting the show, Nelson is in a unique position to bring you cutting-edge information on real estate, business, finance, and law. If you have any questions for Nelson or any of his guests, give him a call at 888-888-2136. That's 888-888-2136. Or check him out online at nelsonradio.com. Nelson Radio. Welcome back to Nelson Real Estate Radio. I'm with my guest host, Mike Fell, accomplished, that's how I'm describing you now, accomplished criminal defense attorney. This segment brought to you by Best Chauffeur, worry-free and on-time limousine transportation services, Worldwide, if you need a limo, text the word limo to 313131. And with comments, questions, clarifying uh, questions on this show, call Mike or I. You can reach us direct, 888-888-2136. That's 888 2136 I've got the founding principal here with us in studio, Mike. Uh, Brian Horner from Alcohol Capital, in, an expert in the multifamily space, the, the apartment Yep. From the lending side, from uh, from the uh, management side, uh, from uh, the ownership side as well, and he's going to give us some good info that we need to know when we're uh, when we're either a uh, apartment uh, owner or uh, renting apartments, things like that. And I might say, for the record, too, another guest with a much lower voice than mine. <laughs> well, that doesn't that doesn't really take. That I guess much. I got to lay off the helium before the yeah, show. Yeah, huh? either okay. that or go through puberty. So, <laughs> Brian, let me ask you. Um, We've obviously we've been talking in the first two segments of our show about the trends in real estate and specifically the residential side, the single family side predominantly. In the multifamily space, is that following the single family trend or is it in front of which direction are you going? Well, Rob, thanks for having me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. Um, I I think by and large, the uh, apartment business is following the single family business, probably not driven by the same set of circumstances, but. uh, there is a uh, definite supply and demand imbalance. There are a lot more buyers of apartment buildings in the market today than there are apartment buildings for sale. And uh, there's a number of uh, factors that have led to that. I think some people have been spooked by the stock market and losses that have taken uh, place there. And so they're interested in buying a piece of real estate and owning an apartment building. And, uh, you know, people do have neighbors that have had tremendous success with that type of investment strategy. So we see a lot of capital chasing apartment buildings. And um, you guys have talked on your show about low interest rates and low interest rates uh, have an impact on people's ability to uh, own apartments. Hey, uh, hey, Brian. Hey, Brian, can anyone uh, own it or invest in an apartment or For instance, do I have to wait for Nelson to die and hopefully leave me his hundred million (laughs) dollars estate? Well, you're going to be in line. You're going to be in line behind me. So, uh, (laughs) uh, listen, um, anybody can own an apartment building. I mean, an apartment owner got started somewhere, and uh, uh, it, it really is a fantastic investment vehicle. We've been financing apartment owners for over 25 years, and the people that I have the good fortune to assist with their apartment financing. Um, the success stories are just incredible. It's, it's, uh, you know, doctors and dentists and, uh, lawyers, uh, lawyers, uh, <laughs> very few lawyers, but, uh, uh, cause they, they spend all their money on expensive cars and homes <laughs> is what we see. But, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, it, listen, anybody can own an apartment building. Um, you obviously need the money to buy it. It's no different than buying a home. You've got to have the down payment, 
Um, some of the lenders today want to know that there's going to be some experienced property manager standing behind it. So a lender may, in fact, require you to bring a third-party property manager along with you so that they'll uh, be comfortable that you can um, – handle the property management side of owning well, an if you're building. get I mean if you are even thinking about getting into uh, apartment purchasing wouldn't you agree that having that property manager is almost a must well for the first time buyer that's for sure and and you know we find that a lot of people who buy one uh, they'll end up buying another and it becomes it, it just becomes a, an overall investment strategy and people have found a lot of success in owning apartments um, so it, it there needs to be a critical mass. We've seen a, there needs to be somewhat of a critical mass in order for people to self-manage. So having a third-party property manager involved um, can really take care of a lot of the headaches in owning apartments, which is what people tend to shy away from. So let me ask you this question on rents. We certainly see both out of L.A. County and Orange County, rents have been escalating. And, you know, from the consumer standpoint, they're going, gosh, it's going up every time I have to renew. It's going up significantly. Is there cap? Are there caps on that? Or is it just pure market driven? Uh, well, there's there are rent control laws. Uh, you hear about, you know, the city of Santa Monica, uh, which has um, a uh, fairly restrictive uh, uh, rent control provision whereby rents cannot be increased dramatically. West Hollywood has that. The city of L.A. has the has rent control, but um, Orange County, there is no rent control, so it is purely a function of supply and demand. Rents can rise as high as people are willing to pay, um, and, uh, and, and it, for that matter, it's, it's, it's a consideration when you're making the investment decision on buying an apartment building. If, if your income is capped, uh, you need to make sure that, um, that you've taken that into account when you're making the decision to buy an apartment building. You're with Nelson Radio, this segment brought to you by Best Chauffeured, Worry-Free, and On-Time Limousine Transportation Services Worldwide. We're with Brian Horner from Alco Capital, looking at the apartment industry and uh, multifamily investment. If you need a limo, which you will probably need a limo ride home. Oh, absolutely. Text the word limo to 313131 or contact us direct at 888 And you know what's cool, Rob? Even if I'm late, they're still on time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to follow that. That's good. That'll make for dead air. Triple eight, triple eight, twenty one thirty six. So on the property management side, that brings up a whole host of different issues that you wrestle with. Uh, one of them, obviously, and this this was a question that we talked about on the way up. But in terms of, I assumed that from a maintenance standpoint, you have increasing costs on maintenance. You have tenants that are doing less and less to maintain properties as they're going through their own financial hardship. Is that an issue, or is it not? Uh, the issue in in apartment ownership, where you make or where you really make or break the investment, is um, is on the maintenance side. Um, the three big expenses in owning an apartment building are, of course, your mortgage, your property taxes, and then the maintenance. And so the upkeep of the apartments is is really a big number. Um, and if you have uh, you know high rents, you charge high rents, you're a little bit um, above market, you're going to get a greater turnover of tenants in that building. And when, t- when tenants leave, it's expensive to put them in a condition to put them back uh, rent ready. And that's a big expense. And, new carpet, uh, new paint. New carpet, new paint, new linoleum, uh, a lot of repairs. Um, and those are big numbers. And um, and uh, so you really have to find that delicate balance between being competitive in the marketplace with your rent level so that your tenants are happy, giving them the service that they expect, and keeping them there. And, uh, you know, the average cost to turn over an apartment is probably two to $3,000. So to get it ready for that next tenant to come in. So it, it can add up quickly if you're turning apartments over. Brian, Mike is itching to ask this question because it's about litigation. <laughs> and it's about lawsuits. God bless them. Uh, and Rob <laughs> is going to be uh, summoned with a lot after this show. But anyways, uh, as far as lawsuits being on the rise, how is that going to affect somebody that wants to get into this apartment buying business? What should they be aware of uh, when they're making that decision? Well, um, from the finance side, we uh, see... A, a lot of owners owning their apartment buildings and entities whereby they are afforded additional protection. And, you know, that's your area of expertise. 
Uh, and, you know, so we see owners buying apartment buildings in limited liability companies or corporations or limited partnerships whereby there's some additional layers of protection that are there. But at you, the end of the day, are you spending half your time in deposition? Or no, is it- no, you're really not. Uh, you know, with every uh, most apartment owners, if the, if they own apartments, they're going to deal with uh, tenant issues and tenant issues. You know, there are evictions. And when there's an eviction, you're going to need an attorney who's going to handle that for you. So, uh, it, you, you do want uh, the protection on the ownership side, but uh, you will spend some time trying to get rid of a tenant that's not paying the rent. Everyone hates an attorney until they need one, right, Brian? Oh, jeez, here we go. <laughs> I'm with guest host Mike Fell and expert contributor Brian Horner looking at the uh, multifamily market. And I think uh, we, we barely touched on the some of the topics, but we'll have you back up and, and uh, dive a little bit deeper. Uh, that was great info. Great info, Brian. Thanks for having this me. This segment brought to you by Best Chauffeured, Worry-Free, and On-Time Limousine Transportation Services. If you have more questions on multifamily, uh, Mike Fell's legal <laughs> advice, give us a call. 888 2136 That's 888 2136 Or text the word Nelson to 313131. And, and whoever 31. wants to sue Robert Nelson, I am right here for at your service. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>